Good day everybody, Sebastian back with you. And in this Watcher of Arms video, I'm going to be covering how to tackle Chapter 9, Stage 7. And I'm going to show you two runs. One uh, is going to be my very dirty pay to win team that I did it just on, on the first run and just sloppily uh, got through it. And then I'm going to show you a run that is a little bit more organized where you can use actually the epics in this game alongside with a fusion, which is abomination. And it, that should hit, be enough uh, as soon as you have the gear and get close to the, the, the battle power. Uh, to beat that stage you should be able to do it no problems by this stage of the game you already probably have a couple of legendaries here that you can use but i'm going to show you the strategy that you can utilize to try to get through it if you do not have that one marksman that can just give you the burst of damage that i found was able to give me a lead in trying to tackle this stage so let's get to it Okay, so what you're going to see right now on the screen is the roster that I use that encompasses the epics that we have in the game alongside Abomination because of course he is a fusion, he's attainable, you can get him. If you by any chance have not finished the Abomination fusion, go ahead and try to do it with Volka. Uh, Volka would be good enough to do what Abomination was doing in this run or even Wrath. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna play here the clip that I collected with these champions. So we here we are at the start of the run and what you are going to notice is my first placement is gonna be I drill. I'm gonna have her facing up. She's gonna take care of these wings here, these flying units that are coming out of these portals for me. And also her ultimate will help with the soldiers that are coming out from this portal right here. Lunaria is gonna be the one that I'm gonna place here up top. She's very integral to this battle. I tried doing it without Lunaria, but she just gives us the boost that we need to clear this. And she also has the capability of doing enough damage to these units uh, to bring them down really quick along with Hydro. So here's where I'm placing my first tank, or I'm gonna place my first tank there. But uh, in this center squares here, I'm just setting up the healers. This is Vortex, which is facing towards Hydro because I wanna cover these tiles right here. And I'm also using a Sunday to cover these uh, these tiles here. Now you're gonna see this unit come about here. So this is where I'm gonna place Wrath down. He's gonna be my first attacker and I'm gonna place him down. And then I'm gonna place Baron here. And I want Baron to be the one to take the hits. So you already can kind of see that before she came out, the arrows were illustrated as she was going to come out this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and set up the trap. And that's why I'm putting here the tank. So as the waves are coming out, the units are coming out. So here are the flying units. Idril is taking care of them. No problem. And Lunaria is covering up top here as well. Wrath is going to go, which is fine. I'm not too concerned about it. I do have Idril's um, ultimate as well. So here's where I'm trying to decide if I'm going to use Breen. So I just decided to use the ultimate right now. So you can see how Idril is helping Lunaria take that soldier down. Makes things easy. Adriel's ultimate is just phenomenal for these type of situations. Especially when you want her to cover units for other um, other heroes as well. So this is where I'm going to use Abomination here. Now here is 
that, that that was the one thing that I want you to pay attention to what I did here, which is if you wanted to, you could put Wrath down here too. And Abomination, the one being taken care of the boss. For this one, I just grab Abomination because if the, the boss does her, you know, when she does her uh, uh, explosions, um, I, I found that Abomination can actually take the hits a little bit better. So I just le left him solo here. So that's what I'm placing him. But if you have another fighter that you have faith in, you can put him there. But at the same time, I'm going to be switching tanks. This is why I brought three tanks to this battle, okay? So I'm going to take uh, Soldi back out now, and I'm going to put in Oleg back in. And the reason for that is because now Oleg becomes the target of the boss. And he has his shield, which is perfect for this situation. So now I'm just waiting her for her to come to this tile here. I'm gonna wait a little bit because I'm waiting for a Soldi's cooldown to be restored. Okay, so here we go. Watch the quick switch here, which is going to be Wrath here, and I'm gonna switch Baron for a Soldi. All right, now we have a Soldi taking the attention of the boss. Her health might be getting low, but we have Vortex here to cover her for that. So there are certain thresholds here where she's going to do her, um, the, the boss is going to essentially do her ultimate, which is at 70, and then she does it again at 40, and then at 10. Every time she loses 30%, she's going to drop those bombs on you. So what I try to do is that I try to time vortexes and as much healing as I could get from the sand if I needed her right at the time when I saw that little bar come across. So here I did not lose anybody on this one since she aimed for the tiles where uh, she is con uh, she's currently currently located. So that was a win. So right now is Wrath doing the job. Wrath is the one taking her down. Uh, Idril is not doing enough damage. She wouldn't do. We would run out of time. Okay, so we did lose somebody there. It's not a big deal because now I have Breen ready to back back everybody up. And she can do enough damage to bring those flying units out, and she can help Lunaria on top as well. So I'm just waiting for Wrath to do his thing. His ultimate saddle, which also helps. And you're just chopping down the boss, essentially. So I think one more. She'll do one more hit here at 10%. So there I timed Vortex as much as I could. We lost Breen, that's fine. Torell is ready to back her up again. Hydril, I'm sorry, Hydril. And the boss is down. And we did it before we ran out of time. So that was the run that I did with these epics um that hopefully by now you should have on your roster and of course if you have legendaries you could easily replace them here and i'm going to show you a run that i did with the legendaries but if you have silas use silas he is great for this because he can chop down the boss if you gear him correctly so now let me show you really quick what the gearing for this specific epics were 
okay here here here's the let's look go through the roster of the epics really quick just to show you how to have them gear so you can get an idea of uh what stats you are going to be looking at uh breen uh she has about let me see if i can get a total there you go so nine thousand attacks about what she has right now i did get her to do a hundred percent crit rate with some crit damage her rage regeneration is about 20 uh, percent and her attack speed is 361 and essentially what i get, uh, did here is that i gave her um the best gear that i have for Su sutra so i mean that's what you have to do sometimes for this type of situations if you want to make your uh champions do what you need them to do wrath here um oh and if you're curious about just the standard gear at this point yeah you could you should be farming the upper at least 18 17 18 so everything is going to be mythic gear and uh so the bungle here has crit rate attack bonus and then crit damage so that's type the type of stats that i was looking for the main stats to be in most of these um most of these um heroes as we are covering it here. Uh, Wrath uh, here, uh, he will have about, yeah, uh, 16,000 attack. We're looking at about 301 speed, 109 crit damage, 184, 109 crit rate, 184 crit damage, some uh, rage region, but not a whole lot. Uh, his uh, rage regeneration comes up really quickly. Lunaria, same thing. You're gonna see a lot of mythic gear forks. Uh, her attacks about ten thousand attacks. She's close to a hundred percent of crit rate, some crit damage, and some rage regeneration. Uh, let me see who else did I have here. Did I use my done? No, I did not. Oh, Terrell. Yeah, or Hydro. I have to get that straight now. It's Hydro. Uh, she has 10,000 attack close to 11 and what are we at 297 speed and some crit rate 70 percent crit rate and some crit damage and let's see oleg oleg is my tank my good buddy i use him for amr right now uh 51 uh let's see here so 84,000 HP, about 5,000 defense. Just make him tanky as much as you can. And not a whole lot of rage or any, um, regeneration there for him. Baron, same thing. Oh man, he still has a legendary piece. I should do him just and give him something else. 70,000 HP, almost 5,000 defense and some rage regeneration. Those were the tanks. Oh, there was another tank, right? Yeah, I sold it. So I sold the um, 76,000 and then uh, HP and 5,000 defense. That's pretty much what you're looking at. 39.5 um, regeneration, uh, rage re uh, regeneration. 76,000 HP, you know, that's kind of in the safe zone. Uh, you saw how her health bar in the battle went down really quick. So that could be one of the things that you could look at. Let me see. Did I show... So I show Lunaria, Wrath, Baron, uh, Oleg, oh, and now the healer. So, okay. So, Vortex is uh, 40,000 HP and 1800 defense. He is very squishy, and I need to revisit him. I haven't really touched him in a while. And not a whole lot of regeneration. He needs, he needs a rework, but that's the minimal stats that I needed him to do that battle with. So, that shouldn't be too intense for you all if uh, you have the gear. This Sunday, uh, you're looking at 38,000 HP. Her healing is based on attack, so I had to put some attack on her. 9,000 and 1,165 defense and some rage region, if you're looking at that. And then last but not least, my abomination. Where is he? Right there. Uh, 50, 57,000 HP with 2,800 defense, almost 1,700 uh, attack. He has 83.5 crit rate and 251 crit damage. This is one of my uh, better sets, I guess, for the guild boss. And um, I just got to get him to 100% crit rate once that um, those pieces start showing up in my account. 
but that's pretty much it in terms of the gearing for these champions and um if you have any questions please leave them down below i will try to get them um as soon as um answered as soon as i can i hope that that kind of helps you out in terms of tackling this specific stage i didn't encounter too many problems with the other ones so this seems to be the one that really does stumble people on their way to the to the end of chapter nine and to leave you all for the um last part of this video i'll just uh, show you the run that i did uh with the legendaries with my main what i consider to be my main roster for this and just to give you another perspective in case you have some of those champions and try to get you to to clear this content as well i'd like to thank you all very much for watching and i will see you next time on another watch for realms video Take. Okay.